more items. This has uh, your wireless mics, uh, the wireless receivers, and also a recorder, and then your, um, I believe this was your CD player. Yep. So, um, nothing that you're really going to have to touch on the wireless mics themselves, except it's useful to be able to tell, you know, if something's on. So, for example, we turn pack number one on, and you'll see the signal will light up there. It'll tell you um, how much you have left on your battery. Which it's, it calculates it first yeah. there, right? So here you have nine hours and 32 minutes left on the battery here. Um, and then when someone's actually has it on and talking, you'll see a signal indicator light up there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of useful if like, hey, I'm not getting any, nothing showing up on the board. So you can glance over there and see if there's some signal coming in. If there's signal coming in, then hey, you're probably muted on the board. Right. If there's no signal there either, then we have probably the microphone. Then it's probably with the microphone. Or if there's nothing there and somebody forgot to turn the pack on, mm -hmm. which right. never happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so last night then the battery light was on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no green on the no green on there. Okay. No, no signal, activity signal light. Battery no, I, and no, what I would yeah. call an activity light. Nothing, right. nothing right. green coming up, you know, on there, and then okay. obviously then nothing on the board. Right. Sure. So. And yeah, so then we chase that down. We got a cable issue on one nine. one of the okay. elements, so we'll get that taken care of. Wire. All right. No, I'm past your fingers. And then two. your yeah, that was the one I had yesterday. Your older your telex then they're still the same as they as they always were. They also have an RF indicator and then an AF indicator when somebody's talking. Kind of the same principle. These it'll maybe give you a little battery gauge, but it won't give you hour and minute of right. how right. much you have left. There's like four segments to it or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yep. And I forget if it was two hours per segment or right. every brand's just a little different. Mm -hmm. so now they give you exact, but I've never actually tested it down to the wire to see, okay, if you're at 15 minutes, how exactly? <laughs> it's kind of like taking your car, car down, how many miles you got? <laughs> All right, so um, to kind of then we'll start going over the board here. Um, basically, although it's, it's digital, it, it still maintains a lot of the same functions of your old analog desk. So remember, you had your fader, and then you had a whole ton of knobs. Basically, all the knobs now are in one section, and those knobs perform those functions for every channel. So rather than have you know the bazillion knobs, here, it's just one bank, and then you will select on that particular channel if you want to do that, assign these functions to that channel. Okay. Um, so basically, just we'll kind of go over the console, going left to right, kind of what you what you have. So you have your channel strip. You have a mute button up on the top here. Um, basically, think red is dead. So. If it's on, it's muted. Um, you have the select button, which allows you to select um, that very that particular channel. If you want to cue something to, you had like the prefade listen or the cue button on your old console. So if you hit that, that sends it to the headphone jack. So if you wanted to hear just just what they're doing, you can hit um, hit that button. Um, Tim's got them all labeled here as to what everybody is. Um, and then you have your, your fader itself. Um, another thing that this desk has is what's called layers. So a fader can have multiple functions to it. So for example, in its base layer, you'll see it has the option for um, your lower strip, which is um, your channel, so channel number 1 through 32. And you also have a second layer, which is the labels up here, which are your effects returns or your mix masters. Um, so that's, um, and also your stereo inputs are in that second layer. Does that make sense? Not sure I get that. Okay. So basically we're, we're just, it, rather than ha have a, a, a board that has 64 faders, we're doubling up functions on a single fader. So one fader can have two functions. So in layer one, for example, this fader here is channel one in, la in the first layer. We go to the second layer, and now it's actually stereo input one. So okay. um, in your case, that's the CD player. So you can flip back and forth between the two. So right now, if I'm in this layer, this fader has no control over mic input one. It's controlling 
the CD player. And if we flip back, now I have no control over the CD player. Now I'm controlling mic number one. Okay. That makes sense to everybody? Cool. And I suppose I should say, if you have any questions or if I'm talking over your head, just ask, please. <laughs> um, yeah, I was there, there's, there's, there's also a layer really to confuse people. Yeah. And <laughs> push the buttons together, yeah. So right? if you hit them both together, then you get another layer. This allows you to create your own custom layer. Um, if Which is basically kind of looked at as this middle, this part here, right? Yes. That would be the, yes. you could label those whatever you wanted yep. to. And so it could be a combination of stereos, inputs, like we could just put the band on the middle layer or, you know, something and, like and that, that, band inputs or whatever. And that allows you to, to take basically anything and put it together. So normally, like if we're in this layer, channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, say I want channel eight and channel four and channel 12 and 36 all right next to each other. You can, you can mm. do that. For your guys' scenario, you might at some point, but for now, it's everything's laid out pretty logically so that anybody coming in can be like, oh, hey, there's number one. That matches mic number one. That all works. If you had the same person mixing every Sunday who thought, hey, I, can, I have a better workflow, they could create their own kind of workflow if they wanted to put, here's the four mics that we're going to be using plus the two mix masters. They can put them all in one layer and never have to switch. Kind of a personal preference thing. In your case, simple is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then fewer people call me at six o'clock on Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> six. Seven o'clock is the earliest. <laughs> all right. So that same thing applies to all thirty-two channels here, as far as what the function is um, and its its layer. Um, so coming up here, we have. Um, Kind of your, your main section here, we have starting with the preamp or your gain. So this is on your analog console, way at the top you had that initial gain knob. That's what, that's what this button is. So if I want to give these functions again to say channel 7, I just have to hit select on channel 7. And now this is controlling those properties for channel 7. Um, we have a, a high pass filter, and what this is on the analog board sometimes was a little button where it cuts everything below 100 hertz. So, for when, say, Pastor has his mic or you have a vocalist, we don't need to hear what's going on down below 100 hertz. Um, now, if it's a, a bass player or a, an instrument or piano that has that full range, yes, we want those frequencies. But if it's a voice, no, we don't, and it's just adding mud, so we can just cut that out. Now, the beauty of um, this board is, on the analog boards, it was a fixed frequency that it would cut from there below. Here, we can sweep. We can pick what mm. frequency that is. So we turn it on by hitting the insert, so green, in this case, is on. No light, it's not active. So green is on, and then you can sweep that frequency, <clears throat> and then you'll see it match. Turn that off. Or the other one. Okay, thanks. You bet. Um, you'll be able to see on the screen too what you're doing, and we'll get to the screen section in just a second. Then we also have the the EQ section, which same as on your um, on your analog board, where you had like the four knobs for the high frequency. You had sweep bowl, high mid, low mid, and then a low frequency EQ. Um, here you have the ability adjustability to both um, expand how broad of an EQ you're putting in or how narrow of an EQ and also sweep that frequency. And I'll show you on the graph here again. And again, um, green light is on. Now it's not active for that channel. So that will change for channels. So right now, say we turn it off on channel one, now we go to channel two, it's back on, but it's, it, it all tracks through depending on which channel you've selected. Um, we have um, some gates and compressors, which are useful things to have. Once they're set, you're really not ever going to have to mess with it. We've kind of preset all of that, but that's, you know, the compressor is what if you have a speaker who talks like this and then suddenly gets really loud and then talks softly again and you don't want to suddenly have someone wake up and say something surprised. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it compresses the sound to kind of even it out a little bit. Um, and that way it's a more pleasant experience for everyone and just makes it a better mix for you. 
Um, and then there's the pan, which is where you can send something to the left side or the right side, um, which is sometimes useful. In your case, just keep it right to the middle. You're not going to really have to pan much. Um, all right. Would that, would that work? Let's say, for example, we had one group on this side and one group on this side, and we were doing an antiphonal split in the church from mm -hmm. like a psalm or something. Would that be something that would be useful coming out one side and then the other? Well, the only thing I would say is that people on this, if you pan, let's say, the people over there to that side, then the people on this side might have a hard time hearing. You know what I mean? That are sitting yeah. on this side. Okay. But you could, you could do it to slightly. That point, you, could, you could do a slight pan. I mean, don't go like cranked all the, all the way, way over. But, you know, if you... It would give it more of that feeling. You, you can make it a little more realistic by just mm -hmm. bumping it a little bit one way or the other. Don't go hard one way to the other, okay. if that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. And um, on this little light, you'll see it's got its indicator lights here. So if it's solid green, it's in center, and then it'll start showing which direction you're, you're panned. Okay. Um, so then we have uh, the touch screen section, which is a really useful feature. Um, and this basically is, again, showing a a more visual rep representation of what you're doing with the knobs here. Um, so in this case, we have our gain knob. Well, the first and the first section here is the gain. So you can highlight different sections, and it'll expand them down below so you can see more. Or you can just kind of look at the, the overall view. Um, so for example, here we have the pulpit. So we can tap on this section. We have the channel one, so that's what channel it's coming in on. We can select the name, so we can rename that channel. So you can give it, you know, in your case, channel one is the pulpit. But if you were in a scenario, for example, on a band channel, where you have your 16 channels there, and maybe you have one set up for one band, and then you have a different group of instruments the next week, so you can relabel your inputs, which is kind of useful. Um, you also have the, the gain, so you can see that this will adjust with the gain and also give you a numerical number as to how much gain you have. Um, there's also the, uh, the phantom power, which is um, this button here. So for condenser microphones, such as what you have at your Jamblin lectern, they, they need power to, to run. So to turn that on, you press and hold either on or off. And in this case, 48 volt will light up when you're sending out phantom power. Everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, we have something called a pad. <coughs> so this is, for example, if you have a, like a keyboard or something that's just the level it puts out is really hot. Um, there's some keyboards like that. Tascam CD players are notoriously hot. And you have your, say for example, you have your gain turned all the way down but it's still just too much. So you can go in here and hold the, turn the pad on, and then that knocked it down by 20 dB. So it gives you tw uh, a cushion there to kind of, um, and you'll see how this, this number on the gain knob changed here. So when we turn the pad off, we have 25 dB of gain. We turn the pad on, now we only have 5 dB of gain, so it knocks it down. Something that you're probably not going to run into a whole lot, but it's, it's a useful thing to have if you do come across that. Um, phase, you'll never have to really worry about that at all. Um, you can put delay on a channel if for some reason you wanted to. For you guys, it's all the delays that we've, it's all been preset in the, you know, if there's any system delay at all. Not something you're going to have to really mess with there at all. Same thing for effects. Um, you know, if we really wanted to get into effects on some event that you would be using them, but for the for your basic use, you're not gonna really mess with the effects too much, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, is, that it, hmm? is that what was happening with that one mic? Oh, I, as a band. Yeah, I mean, we on the band we usually we'll put some reverb and stuff sure. on the mics and and you know a little bit on the guitar. But yeah, we had one. It was because it wasn't set to. It was an on PFL, the one, and we were having some problems on Gotcha. Track, but we got to the bottom of that, too. So you, you learn by uh, 
We'll figure it out in a hurry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. and, and again, the the best way to to figure things out, like I can talk a lot about it and stuff, but to really sit down and you know actually press the buttons and see what they do. Um, Sometimes I try, you know, to have someone actually sit and work and work through it. We get kind of a, a big enough group that it's sort of easier for me to talk about it. But if at any point, like any, you want to step up and hey, let me do it by all means, hit the buttons and see what it does. Um, <laughs> so um, moving then across. Oh, I should do a channel link. Um, so, oh show that in the menu. But what, what you can do is you can link two channels together. So say you have a, st a stereo keyboard, right? So it's sending out a left output and a right, left and right side, and you're coming into your digital snake, say channels one and two. So you can link those two channels together. So rather than having a set EQ for one side and set EQ for the other side, it, they're linked together. So your adjustments will apply to both channels and also will move both faders together. Yeah, the Denon player, I said, I linked the Denon player, so if you wanted to show them yeah. up on the end. Okay, so down here, for example, we have, this guy is linked, so the faders move together, which is, so that you kind of know, hey, that's a stereo channel, because otherwise we bring up one side and we're missing the other. So you can link it together, and then the, um, the EQ settings, so if I am on this channel and I bypass the EQ, I come over here and the EQ is bypassed as well. So it just brings everything together nicely, which is a useful feature. All right. Um, then we have um, we have the gate, which is this guy here, and basically that um, what that does is sets a threshold over the sound. So it's like there's you have your sound coming here, but the gate is closed until the sound reaches a certain level, and then the gate will open and let it through. Where, you, where you'll see that is a lot with, with like drums and stuff, where um, you might put a gate on the toms because if you just have your mic there and it's open all the time, the mic will be picking up the cymbals and the other parts of the kit. So you can dial in that gate for that, um, that particular tom so it, the gate won't open until you actually hit that tom and then that mm -hmm. kind of cleans up your mix a little bit. So on a drum set you would have multiple... Uh, microphones on it? Is that what you're kind of saying? If, if there's, yeah, we get into philosophical discussion well, about no. how, many, how many mics, but <laughs> no, you, no, can, no. you can have multiple well, microphones. You want to have just one mic for the most part? You Not necessarily, no. You'd drums, usually have, so. you know, one on your okay. snare, and then right. you could have mics on each tom and your right. kick drum. Okay, all right. But um, it, it really depends on the venue. It, it, it's a whole philosophical <laughs> application <laughs> oh, yeah. no, no. discussion that you can get into. I mean, there's some. There's one company but that's, that's why out. you would have a gate on. That is why. Right? Yeah, why that's one of the one on. of the reasons. <clears throat> or um, maybe, if it, for example, an ambient microphone, or you have a, say, you have a like a lectern mic, but it's kind of in a noisy speaking area, or you got a lot of ambient crowd noise. You could set a gate on it so that when somebody's actually up to the mic and talking, then it'll. Open, open up. up to that person. You'll see that in, say, like a, a boardroom or a, a conference room or like a, a town hall meeting kind of deal where you got all the, your representatives sitting up there. So their mics will be generally gated until they actually Get up speak, to it. which is useful because otherwise you have everybody's whisperings and it's yeah. makes a mush out of things. And that's weird. That's the, that's the gate right here. Um, and you can insert it or not. Um, I've done that with um, our our bass player is I don't know he's, his Tom's bass guitar is a little noisy you mm -hmm. know just yeah have to that, pick up that'd be and, another and just you know it'll put some noise in there so I just set a gate on it and it yep. cleans that out and then doesn't kick in until yeah you, know, you actually play it. yeah so the big the big trick is if you're using a gate make sure your your threshold isn't too high mm -hmm. because then it can sound Funky. Only get the big notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did a show once where, you know, in sound check, the kick drum was really hitting it hard, and then in the show, he decided not to hit it so hard, and then mm. he was the <laughs> only person playing at that point, and nobody heard the kick drum. <laughs> <laughs> Directors turn around, and everybody's ticked, and it was a great time. So, <laughs> all right. So then we'll look at the, at the EQ next. Um, so what we see here is we have... 
first of all, you can see the high pass filter. So it'll go kind of just like it is on these group of buttons here. You have your high pass filter, low, low mid, high mid, and high frequencies. So you can hit insert, you'll see the green light turn on, and then you'll see this, this little line on the graph here is, is the high pass filter. So you can see as I move it, I'm cutting everything below, you know, here, below 562 hertz, we're cutting. Or we can move it down, you know, to all the way to nothing and it's not cutting out anything. It'll default generally when you first start to about 100 hertz. And that's generally a good place to start. Sometimes you'll, for like a, a female vocal or something, you can cheat that up into the 150, maybe 180, depending. Don't go too high or you'll, if you're listening to it, you'll hear where it suddenly starts to get unnatural, like you're, mi you're missing something. But generally, the 100 to 120 is a place that you can um, take out because it's, it's not content that's, that's helping you. It's, at that point, it's just kind of your ambient noise, that sort of thing. Now, uh, since this channel is on the, um, on the CD player, you want the full range, so we're not going to leave that inserted there. All right, so then moving into the, to the EQ, like I said, it, it acts the same way as it would have on your, on your analog desk with the advantage that you can see what you're doing now. Um, so, for example, whoever was playing this last, like the little low end, to it. Yeah. was having fun with that. So, um, <laughs> for example, so here's my, my low frequency. So we have, in order, your knob is the width, which sets how wide it's going to be, your frequency, and your gain. So, um, and that matches up right here. So, we're going to say we want to cut uh, the low frequency. So we can see that, okay, here we are. You, you have your line, which is kind of in the middle on, on the graph. So that's where's your, you're not cutting or boosting. And you can, it'll show you, you're either going above the line or below the line. So here, say we want to take 5 dB out. We can move that frequency so we can sweep it any, anywhere you want. Now, um, with this, you can you could put the low frequency one all the way up here, and then we'll take the high frequency one and put it all the way up here, or all the way down, and then it kind of gets confusing. So you have four of them, kind of use them in order, please. <laughs> <laughs> Help all of us OCD people out. <laughs> all right. And then you can, um, you can make this, what you're cutting, either narrower. So if you just... Me, it's just this one little high frequency that you just want to, okay, we just need to notch that out. So you can be, you know, just do a really tight, um, tight notch. We can just take out that little bit. Or maybe um, it's just you want it to be a little broader. So then you can widen it way out and take out a huge chunk. Um, the, the trick is... Apply it selectively because if you're okay, I'm not at a big chunk here at a big boost there. It's just making it a mess. Generally, what would be found? It's better to to subtract EQ, so it's better to cut things out than try and push more things in. It usually is just a, a good rule to to go by. But now, if you it's important to know too. So say we cut here and then we take a big chunk out here and we take a big chunk out here. There's nothing left. I walked into a church the other day and they're like, yeah, his pastor's voice just sounds fine. We just can't find it. I look at the, I'm like, how do you hear him at all? There is nothing, <laughs> you're not letting anything through. So, um, is his theory, like you're messing with this and you're like, oh, I got it totally goofed up now. Is there like a default reset? Um, that was the question you asked me last time, and I said, yes, there is, and I can't remember where it is. <laughs> uh, there, there's a reset on the EQ, but it, um, and, and I know Mike will probably get into it. There's a, there's, you can save all the stuff as scenes and it's saved on there. So everything that he's messing with now, we can just go and hit a recall and it's going to all go back to yeah. okay. our base setting. Is that you mean or specifically for the EQ? Well, you, either, either way, there's I guess. A, you know, for, the, a, for the EQ, you know, like I'm that. messing with the channel because something's goof and then it's just making it worse and I just want to go back to the starting yeah. point. Um, there is a reset for the EQ. Or is it recall? You don't want to call it reset no. recall? 
Let me get back to you on that one. Okay. Because, yes, there, there is... Because that would be useful, you know, like, yeah. I, like I said, if you're, you're t tweaking something, you're like, yeah, I'm just yeah. making it worse, Let me. I want to go back yeah. to starting point and mm -hmm. start over. Yeah. It'd be nice just to hit it. I mean, you, 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 can, you can easily compare, so say you're, you're listening to them after you've EQ'd and you're, okay, mm -hmm. what do you sound like before? Well, just take the EQ out. Okay. And then you can hear what it is like, what? and then, okay, did I make it help? Did I not? Okay. Um, but, yes, I believe there's a way to just... Knock it flat again and start from scratch. Okay. And I just—I <laughs> can tell you on the Yamaha desk where that button I was is. Say I'm you, you put on to a lot of different boards. So. Mm -hmm. Keep them all straight. Um, all right, everybody with all together mm -hmm. on the EQ so mm -hmm. far, and then we'll look at the the compressor here. So um, this is kind of the same the same thing as a gate. No, it's not the same thing as a gate, but a similar thing where you have sound coming in, but now instead of using sound to open the gate, we're going to, the sound, it's going to cap down. Once I cross the threshold, we're going to start compressing on how much we allow past it. Um, so just, we'll use this for an example. Um, check, check, check. So you can see here, this is, um, where we have sound coming in, so the green is our level coming in, and our red is what we're compressing. So here are th we've set our threshold, which is adjustable here, as to where we start compressing. So you see the, I lower the threshold, and I'm really got to talk loud, but it's really cutting it out as opposed to I start bringing the threshold back up, and it, um, and you can see it's letting more through. So what's nice about that is. Um, if I sit here and talk, so here's with no, and if I talk really loud, it gets really loud like that. But if I bring in the, bring in the gate or the compressor, and then I talk really loud, and I'm not blowing everyone away, which you'll, everybody's heard that speaker that just if he talks, talks, <laughs> I just lets her rip, and then we're like, whoa, so loud. Olivia. Um, I apologize if you're that speaker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just saying, I think I did that last night at the church I preached at. No. <laughs> um, and then you, you also have, you can select, so we have the, this knob here, which kind of gives you your, your overall selection, sets the threshold, but you can also select these individual um, items here, and then you can use this knob over here to change your ratio. So if we just want to compress a little bit. Usually in the three and a half to one ratio, somewhere three, three and a half to one is a good ratio to be in. Um, but if you, okay, well, we're just going to give you this level and you are not going above this level, you can make that ratio a lot harder. So you can see how this curve here changes as to how much we're, we're either going to kind of round off just a little bit or we're going to really start flattening you out. But like this, it gets really obvious when you're, um, it'll be really obvious when yeah, you just cut them off. Where you use a little bit, it, it, it's more of a natural thing where um, you're, you're taking some away, but you're not blatantly taking it away. So you, you want to find a, just a, a nice ratio where it just takes out a little bit. Is that compressor, because you're talking about the high end, you know, going too high. If it gets too soft, does it boost it up? No. Well? Okay. Um, there's another, some consoles have a function that will do that, but generally that's, dude, speak up. <laughs> <laughs> um, because you, And part of that set with the pregame too is, is how the yeah, person speaks a little bit. That, and, that, that's, you, you do have that, that control with, with the gain and stuff. Sure. But basically like I always tell people, um, I'm only amplifying, or I, I can only control what you give me. Yep. So if you're not giving me anything, no. there's only so much I can do. Right. The, the blunt way to say it is garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> <laughs> so some people figured that out at a young age and are great to mix, and other people just don't understand that concept. Um, but yeah, so there's only so much you can do. I can knock down... If, you, if you're giving me a lot, I can knock it down a lot more than what I can if you're not giving me anything or if it's one of those people that holds their mic down here. I'm sorry. <laughs> it just physically can't pick it up. Yeah. So Exactly. All right. 
Um, cool. We good on? Yeah, and I, all I would add is that just, I mean, so you, all of that that Mike showed you here is actually, you can do all that from the iPad too. Yes. So everything on the compressor, everything on the EQ, it, it's done obviously in a little different way, touch screen, but that's all, you can do that all mm -hmm. from here. Um, so. Something else that I should add is that you have something called libraries, which is not only do you have scenes which stores everything, but you can also store individual things. So, for example, hey, one Sunday I've set Pastor's EQ, and boy, that really sounds great, and I want to hang on to that EQ for just so I, I know I have it. So you have this function button down here, and this function brings up the library. And what you can do is, um, in the library, the board already has a whole bunch of various EQ settings that you can start with. So say, for example, okay, I'm going to have a couple vocalists coming in, and I don't know what they sound like, but I can at least get myself a good start because I can come down here, hit the factory button, and then I can... Um, oh, come on. Do you have user levels assigned? No. All right. I think what I would do here, like you go, I think you got to select it. Wait. Oh, there yeah, you go. and then and then scroll. Okay. I sat and looked at that for a long time too. So you, you have a, a variety of EQs. So if you select in the live, you can use this to scroll up and down. And there's different kick drum EQs, different guitar EQs, acoustic guitar, electric guitar. So you can pick. Um, you can find a an EQ, and then you can recall that EQ, and it'll load that up for you. Um, there's also a, um, a user library, um, which we don't have, um, we haven't created any, um, any EQ libraries, but say we wanted to store that one, um, well, we, we have a well, preamp, so that's his input gain. Yeah. So, so I guess that's important to know. You have two libraries here. You have the EQ library, and you have your, your preamp, which is your, your gain. So if you found a good gain with... I that, think that might have the EQ settings in it, too. I'm not sure. It could Am be I in wrong? a different show. Okay. And maybe that's it. Um, so, and if you, you have one you like and you want to save it, you just come over here and hit Store New, and then you can give it a name, and then hit OK, and you'll be you'll have one in the library that then you can pull from in the future. Um, and you can do that with EQs, with input gain. You can do that with a, if you have a compressor setting that you really like or you found a gate that's really dialed in, you can store that as well in the library and recall that at a later date. Yep, see, so like, we have a, a compressor saved for both you and... Um, both pastors, and just kind of nice. All right, so moving on over, we have um, a couple other buttons here that bring up some screen options. So we have uh, processing. This is the processing page that we have here. Um, we also have routing, um, and this is where we can control what what mix is the channel going to or kind of give it a group assignment, that sort of thing. All that we've already set up based on how you guys use the system. There's not much that you should ever have to change in there. Um, but it, that's, that's where that is, should you ever have to, and that's what that does. Um, so then we have a couple other screens here. Um, so we have, first of all, our home screen. This is where you would go to shut down the board. Um, so we have the red shutdown button here, and we hit shut down, and then you could say yes or no, and you confirm, yes, I do want to shut down, and then once the board will say, okay.